Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I was live this morning at 8.30 and I had some hiccups in my sound. It was very irritating and I don't know why. I'll go in and do some research. So I thought I'd go ahead and just re-record this and upload it so that you can see when I say deep dive going in and looking at some of the numbers, talking about what I think August is going to be like. And I think August is going to be slower. I don't see prices going up. And so I'm going to show you why I think that and uh, share some numbers to back it up. I had a comment on my channel earlier this morning that said something about false data. Um, we don't make this stuff up. We just pull it off the MLS. So um, if you think it's false data, um, go find a video about baby goats. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so but I'm going to show you what I'm finding here right now. We're looking at the... And I'm not trying to be bitter. I just think that was ridiculous. We are down 18.94% in our listing count of homes that were sold the past 30 days. So that's a, that's a pretty significant number. It's slow. Um, it's slow both seasonally and it's slow for a couple other reasons. One, we've hit an affordability wall. Two, it's an election year and people just don't like the anxiety and nobody buys big ticket items if they're nervous. Now, I don't care who wins. The general trend in real estate is not going to change after November. If prices are going down, they're going to go down in January. If they're going up, they're going to go up in January. The election isn't going to mean anything. But nobody likes all the uncertainty. So people go, not going to buy a car, not going to change jobs, not going to buy a house. Let's sit it out. Add to that, I'll talk a little bit later about the new changes with the National Association of Realtors uh, telling us that, you know, buyer agent commissions can't be posted on the MLS. And all of the national confusion around that has got people sitting back going, I don't get it. I'm going to sit this out. And so we're going to look and see where our numbers are today in total. Active listings are up 57.2%. That's a good thing. I remember when listings were way down, like 4,500. Today we're at 17,800. And one of our prognosticators on YouTube said, listings are up 45%. I said, good. I hope they go up 300%. We need them. So 57% is nothing alarming. Um, normal for our market used to be around 24 to 27,000 homes. And we've been stuck at 17,800 for a long, long time. Sold listings are down 15%. We just showed you that. So here's active listings at 17,932. Median price per square foot at 261. The sales price is up 3.7%. Month of supplies, 2.91. I'll show you what that looks like on a chart. Median days on the market is up 14.6%. So this is why, one of the reasons, mortgage rates are 686 and there's a lot of chatter that there's some rate cuts coming in September. We're going to see one and maybe two more the rest of the year, according to bond traders. But take a look at this article right here. Traders may be jumping the gun once again by betting on aggressive Fed rate cuts. This could be the eighth time since the Fed started raising rates in March 2022 that traders have bet on dramatic cuts only to walk that back. So even the smartest people in the room are going, yeah, we're going to see a lot of rate cuts. And then they get around that time frame. Where, where's the rate cuts? When do we have rate cuts? Well, there's got to be a problem in the economy. In other words, it's got to be slowing down. We're seeing some unemployment start to pick up, but it's still really good. Uh, we're seeing inflation come down, but it hasn't stuck there yet. So they're going to want to wait that out. You usually need a negative GDP gross domestic product before the Fed steps in, and we just went up 2.8. So they're sitting back going, I'm not sure if we're going to cut or not. Now, Chairman Powell has said, we anticipate that if the data keeps going where we think it's going, we may be in a position to cut rates, but we don't know. And so with that being said, here's our active listings just stuck. Uh, you know, I expected them to kind of start to come down a little bit, uh, but they're not. They're just staying flat and one of the reasons is if you look at my seven day moving average here the top line is number of new listings not active but new and the black line is number of contracts there's a gap of only about 85 to 100 homes that's what gets added in 
to the new listing pool. And we're not seeing enough of that or a big enough number to make a huge impact on, on listings. Now, here's pricing. This is number of price cuts. Right now, we're sitting at 2200 and we were at about 2100 So price cuts have gone up a little bit, um, and we're seeing a little bit more of that. Percent of closing with seller paid. I'm going to go to this one here. This one's more interesting to me. 54.6% um, of homes are cutting their, they're giving you a, money back at closing, help your closing costs. Um, and I, I found a map here. Let's see if I can pull this up. And uh, here's the, let's see, map concessions by zip code. This is the one I'm looking for here. This one gets interesting. Let's look at this zip code, 85226 in Chandler, very popular in the Kyrene School District. 34 homes sold, 13 of them offered buyer concessions, seller concessions to the tune of $8,500. So 38% of those sellers said, here, I'll help pony up some money. This dra drastically changes when you get down to Maricopa where they have high competition with new builds. And there's uh, 101 homes on the market that sold, 78 of them offered concessions. That's 77% at a median price of $10,000. And you see that also in Santan, where there's also a lot of competition with builders. So you can see that there were 65 homes sold, 48 of them, 73% offered seller concessions, 10 grand. It's pretty hefty. This is where we see average list price per square foot. I've showed this a million times. See how it goes up and goes down? Okay, that's encouraging. Prices are coming down, right? Well, it depends. When you look at anything under $1 million, as I filter these out, as I try to filter these out, um, you're going to see that line change dramatically. And you can see that it's flat. $256 per square foot today, $256. What the heck is going on? It's because of that last map that I just showed you. Sellers are saying, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to leave my asking price where it is, but I'm going to offer you some assistance at closing. Okay. That's what they're doing. They say, if I if I have to pony up ten dollars or $15,000 to help a buyer get into this house, I'm going to want my asking price. Now, I saw a thing on Facebook this morning in a real estate agent forum where one of the agents said, my seller's got it, her house priced at $850,000. It's been on the market for 110 days, and she won't budge. Well, it's going to be there till that listing expires. If you're on 110 days and you don't have an offer, it's price, folks. That's all it is. It's price. If you're sitting there saying, oh, I got a low ball offer. Well, look how it compares to any other homes in your neighborhood. Is it really a low ball offer or are you coming in too hot? And so sellers are trying to sell their homes, but we don't have a lot of desperation. In other words, right now in our market, and this will continue through August as well, there isn't a high rate of unemployment where people are going to have to sell and move. There's not a whole lot of jobs going back and forth between states where people are having a lot of corporate relocations. Just not a lot of pressure to force you to have to sell your house. And the majority of the people are sitting in the house with low interest rates. They're going to stay put. So as we go and we look into August, what's going to change? I think rates are going to remain about the same. I think sales volume are going to stay about where they are, maybe go lower. And uh, we're just not seeing a whole lot of movement there. Even when we look at uh, um, where people are moving to and from right now, we just look at Redfin data. It's showing here that more than 11,000 people were searching to move into the state of Arizona. And that's just Redfin. That doesn't count how many people are looking at that on Zillow. And, of course, the dark blue states are people that are looking to move out. And uh, that's just research people getting online now what's going on with this lawsuit that came in with Sturtz Burnett and the uh, what do I want to call the uh, restrictions on showing commissions on the MLS for us it goes into effect August 1st for the rest of the country August 17th each multiple listing service could determine on their own when they wanted to enact these new guidelines and that's all the new guidelines are is that you can no longer post 
offering compensation to a buyer's agent. You can't post it. You can still offer it. It's kind of weird. So it's created a lot of confusion, even to where the president said, the 6% commission is gone. You're all going to save money. He could not be more wrong. And a lot of news companies have said the same thing. The 6% commission has gone. Well, you know, it kind of got whittled down anyway as the market got brisk. But this has nothing to do with the percentage. All it is is you can't post it. Now, because of the confusion, some people are sitting on their hands waiting to see what it's going to be like. I've called this the summer of confusion. It's going to be rough. The requirement is now, and this is where it really gets confusing, that before an agent can show you a home, you have to enter into an agreement with that agent so you know how much they charge to represent you. So the agreement says, uh, you're going out with me, I charge 2.5% to manage the transaction, or maybe I charge 2%, maybe I charge 3 maybe I charge 1%. It's all over the board, always has been. It always has been based on what the seller's been offering. Now the seller can still offer that, but if they don't, um, we can enter an agreement that you, the buyer, will pay me. Now, how many buyers are going to want to do that? Probably not too many. Plus, they don't want to enter into an agreement. So we can have an agreement that says, I charge 2%. Okay. Now we go to a house and it's for sale. I have to now call the agent and go, is there an agreement to pay a buyer broker commission? No, the seller is offering nothing. Okay, so I go back to the buyer and say, now the buyer's not offering anything, but I charge 2%. How would you like to handle that? In most cases, the buyer's going to say, let's write an offer and then ask them to contribute that 2% for concessions for a buyer agent commission. See how that works? Same thing. It's just done differently. But where the nervousness is coming in is buyer agents, buyers right now are going... I have to enter into an agreement with an agent before I can even see the house? To heck with that. I'm just going to wait till they have an open house and go see it myself, or I'm going to call the agent that's uh, got it listed. Well, now wait. The agent that's got it listed is still going to have to sign an agreement with you to show you the house if he's going to represent you as a buyer, if he's going to show you the house. So guess what's happening? Open house traffic is starting to go through the roof. Buyers are going, I'm going to walk into a house unrepresented and see if I like it figure out what to do later. So we're seeing more of that. We're seeing buyer traffic with their agents start to go down a little bit. Now, the dirty little secret is when you sign a buyer broker agreement with an agent, you can sign one just for the weekend if you want. It's like going on a date. You don't bring the engagement ring to the dinner table. You don't want to make a long-term commitment. Buyers don't want to do that with realtors either. Well, somebody asked a question this morning on the show. Do you think the MLS will go away? No. No. Multiple listing service is a platform of clear cooperation with some very strict rules. You have to make sure all the data is accurate. Now, there are some countries that don't have that, like England. Panama, I used as an example. You can look at a house that's for sale for $190,000. Hmm, okay. You go to another realtor's website, it's 205000 you eventually work your way down to where you contact the owner and they go, oh, no, I'm only asking 180. There's no multiple listing service down there. So the agent goes to the seller and says, what do you want? I want 180. Okay, well, I'm going to mark it for 190. Great. That seller can list it with several different agents. Hey, you want my listing? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to see if I can get 200 for it. Great. Okay, I only want 180. So that's how they make their commissions. We don't do that here in the United States. We have a set price. We lay out how much we used to lay out how much we were paying the buyer broker commission. And quite honestly, we're charging the seller a certain percentage. Here's what it is. I'm taking that and I'm splitting it with another brokerage. Or you know what? I'm giving the other brokerage 30% of that. Or I'm giving them more than that. I offered 4% once. No, 5%. I charged the seller 6%. Offered 5%. Bring me a buyer. Here's 5%. Just to see what would happen. Everybody thought it was a mistake. I go, do you see the buy broke that I'm offering? Yeah, I thought that was an error. No, it's true. Oh, it didn't influence their decision at all. It didn't make them say, oh, good. Well, let me call three other buyers. This is great. It doesn't. There is an impact. Let's be honest. If, if I've got a buyer broker agreement where you're going to pay me 2% and you write an offer 
for the seller and we ask for that 2% to come back from the seller to pay me as an agent and they say no, then as a buyer I can say, okay, how do you, buyer's agent, how do you want to proceed? And the buyer can say, well, I really want that house. Okay, well, you have to work directly with the uh, selling agent then because I'm not going to draft all the documents and do all the work and see it all the way to the end for nothing. That's the way business works. That's the way it works with your lawyer. That's the way it works with a car dealer. Have you gone in to negotiate with a car and then actually asked the car dealer, the, the sales agent, what they make? We have no idea what they make on the car. They don't post it anywhere. We don't care. We just say that see the car is fifteen thousand dollars. Great. Okay. How much is your commission on that? We never ask, but we do in real estate. So it's going to get very, very confusing as we move forward. And I think that's going to have an impact in the month of August, along with the jitters that we have over this contentious election year. So anyway, that's my outlook on August in the Arizona real estate market. If you watch me live this morning, I uh, apologize for all the crackling that was going on. So now I'm going to try and figure out what the heck happened. Have a great day. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick at rickhelps.com.